Good evening and welcome to Primetime News. I'm Sandro Fernando. Let's take a look at the headlines for tonight. Biku Association of the Inter-University Students Federation march to the President's residence. SJB to table two motions of no confidence against the government and the president. Andhra Kumar Desa Naik's expose. Bhagwat also Lingalantiyai, Lansiyai, American Nixa Janapade Ekatila Parikshan and Karan. Will not meet politicians until the crisis is resolved. Mahanayaka of the Malvatu chapter declines to meet politicians. Generator at the Norochole power plant malfunctions. Possibility of power outages increasing further. Another 300 million yuan from China. Sri Lankan Muslims celebrate Eid ul Fitr today. Starting off with news here at home, a tense situation was reported when the Bikku Association of the Inter-University Student Federation attempted to march towards the residence of the president in Fort today. The Bikku Association of the Inter-University Students Federation began protest march from the Vyadama Devi Park under the theme, Let's Send the Government Home and Build the People's Power. The group protested opposite the residence of the president and then marched towards Gota Gogama. The Samagi Janabalavege, led by opposition leader Sajid Premadasa, handed over a motion of no confidence against the government and the president. The faith in the government inside and outside parliament is tarnished. We hope that this will be discussed soon. The way parliamentarians vote in this no confidence motion could be used to gauge which side they are on. Are they with the Sri Lankan people who are suffering or are they with the government that is destroying the country? This can be used as an opportunity to show this. Why was a motion of no confidence brought against the president instead of a motion to impeach the president? According to Article 27 of the Constitution, he swears that he will provide the people of Sri Lanka with food, clothing and shelter. That oath alone is enough. Before the two motions of no confidence were presented, parties affiliated with the Samagi Jana Balavegya met at the office of the opposition leader. When governing in the future, an agenda will be presented. We must say that we are ready to discuss about an interim government according to that agenda. The motion of no confidence against the government has already been passed among the people. This will be done in parliament as well.
If this continues to be postponed, we will bring a motion of no confidence against the speaker as well. We are ready to change the speaker too. Meanwhile, the Samagi Janabalavege held talks with the parties that broke away from the government and 11 other independent groups. The independent groups proposed the establishment of a national unity government. The Samagi Janabalavege attended the discussions with us today with his consent. Do not come to final conclusions. Politics change from time to time. There are no eternal friends nor enemies. The issue is that everyone in the country is demanding for the resignation of Gautabe Rajpaksa. There is an issue as to how we can establish a government under this same ruler. We are not ready to deal with a failed leader like Gautabe Rajpaksa. The parliamentarians who broke away from the government said that the Prime Minister will step down tomorrow and that the government will also step down. The motion of no confidence will proceed accordingly. They stepped out hoping that the president and the government will stabilize. Another group is saying that the Prime Minister must continue to hold his office. There is also a group saying that Basil Rajpaksa should stay on. The group that demanded that Basil should leave is now holding discussions with him. This is all a lie. <laughs> I don't think that the opposition can pass this motion of no confidence. We can show the numbers, but since there is a different opinion among the grassroots, we need to do the right thing by them as well. Let's all unite and work together. We need to form a national unity government. Raja is Tauratte Mukad. Kenal betul mah ibat tenawa de, agamet tu mah ibat tenawa. Eh mana itu? Basil Rajapaksa Mahata, ini nama Anduak Nawat Sakas Karn. Sawat Sakas Chaki Pyaat, Pyaat tu mete niemi tay. More discussions are to be held soon. We will only see what happens after that. Many political parties in parliament will take part in a national council to discuss the national consensus government. Those parties will have to suggest who the prime minister and the cabinet will be in the new national consensus government. Speaking of Basil Rajapaksha, the Sri Lanka Purujana Peramuna is of the stance that Mahindra Rajapaksha must be the prime minister. However, the national council will make the final decision. Therefore, according to the final decision, the new prime minister Minister could either be Mahindra Rajapaksha or someone else. Uh, Samata Mahindra Rajapaksha Mahatma Venat Pula, Venat Taik Venat Pula. While political parties have not yet reached a consensus on how to address the current political crisis in the country, the Mahanayaka of the Malwata chapter of the Siam sect, most venerable Tibba Tuave Sri Sumangala Thero, decided to boycott all meetings with politicians. A group of people who support the people's protests who called on the Mahanayaka Thero today requested the Thero to remove all honorary titles bestowed upon the Rajapaksas. The group also called on the Mahanayaka of the Askari chapter of the Siam sect, Most Venerable Varaka Godanyana Ratnathera. The implementation of the proposed 21st Amendment to the Constitution was discussed at the Cabinet Media Briefing held today. Firstly, when the subcommittee was appointed, uh, no timeline was given. But uh, at the discussion, what was highlighted by um, uh, Honorable uh, 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 Ali Sabri, who is also the Minister of Justice, is uh, if you uh, are to look at the private bills, 
that a private bill that has been presented by uh, uh, honorable uh, vijaydas rajapaksha or the uh, bill that has been presented by the opposition that it can take time he mentioned something like at least 6 months the process will take so in order to expedite that he said it is better for the government to come up with a proposal so that is why the subcommittee was appointed so uh, all i can say is it, it has to be a faster process than uh, what was indicated by honorable alisabri but no timeline was agreed Representatives of the Bar Association of Sri Lanka, the Chamber of Commerce and the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Sri Lanka visited the Mahanayaka Theros of the Malvatu and Askari chapters of the Siam sect. The Mahanayaka Theros were briefed on the proposals drafted by the Bar Association of Sri Lanka to solve the economic and political crisis in the country. We have presented our proposal under 13 categories. Our proposals include things that can be done immediately, things that can be done politically, and also steps that can be taken to create economic growth. We have joined together with many other professional organizations. We hope to band together with these professional organizations and educate political parties, and we request all politicians to make sacrifices for the people and for the country. We are of the opinion that politicians should act diplomatically, regardless of if the motion of no confidence is passed or defeated in parliament we propose the establishment of a national government establish a cabinet with about 15 ministers representing all parties in parliament our proposals are not bound to the motion of no confidence even if the motion of no confidence is passed these proposals can be implemented me yojana waliya kriyatmak karanna puluwa ujwala idine janadhipati agamati vipaksha nayakathuma amubuna ada amubena We hope to meet them. We have already sent this proposal to the relevant parties. We hope to discuss these matters not only with them but with all other parties concerned. We can make a salakala balan. The Voice Against Corruption convened a special media briefing this morning at the Foundation Institute to expose details of large-scale corruption and fraud in Sri Lanka. Leader of the Janata Vimukti Peramuna spoke at this media briefing and referred to many files that he brought along with him. If any international body or media institution conducts an investigation in international fraud and corruption, several people from Sri Lanka are found to be involved in these illicit transactions. Jalia Vikramasuria is a relative of Mahinda Rajapaksa. The final decision in Jalia Vikramasuria's case in the United States is to be delivered. In May, 6.2 million was allocated for the construction of the Sri Lankan embassy in the United States. He had stolen 3.3 million. That is 55% of the total amount. He has confessed that he did this in a US court. You remember the Pandora papers that were released recently. It revealed that the family of Tirunadeshan and Nirupama are in possession of close to 160 million US dollars. Many properties of Basil Rajapaksa are under the name of Tirunadeshan. There was a famous deal called the Gin Nilvala deal, 4,100 million rupees. Not a single thing has been done. This money was paid to the company named China National Merchantry. This company has an account in Hong Kong. I have the account numbers in this file. Some money from this Hong Kong account was transferred to a company called Ruth International. A total of 5 million US dollars has been released to this company in separate installments. That company is owned by Tirunadesan. That company transfers money to an account in a Sri Lankan bank at Kolpiti. Money from this Sri Lankan bank account had been used to pay for the land in Malwana. In Sri Lanka we in a bank we ginu me salli vedan karala tibenawa Malwani idama ganna. Pahuge dawasala Englanthe ai. Recently England France and the United States conducted an investigation into instances where the French Airbus company had influenced various countries to purchase their aircrafts. Sri Lanka purchased aircrafts from this company as well. The meeting where the executive board of Sri Lankan Airlines decided to purchase these Airbuses was held at the official residence of Chamal Rajapaksa in Batarmulla because his son was a member of that board. This is the most expensive purchase that had been carried out in the history of Sri Lanka. They entered into an agreement to receive bribes of 1.16 million US dollars for the purchase of the A350 aircrafts and a bribe of 300,000 US dollars for the four aircrafts that were leased. The total bribe was 16.17 million US dollars. When these investigations were ongoing, they did not receive the entire 16 million US dollars because the government fell. They got an advance of 2 million US dollars. 
This advance payment of 2 million US dollars was transferred to an account in Brunei under the name of the wife of Kapila Chandra Sena, the CEO of Sri Lankan Airlines at the time. The 2 million US dollars in the account in Brunei was transferred to an account in Australia. A part of the money from this Australian account was then transferred to three accounts in Sri Lanka. One of the accounts that received the money was under the name of Nimal Pereira. Nimal Pereira. The Yahapalnir government attempted to cancel this agreement to purchase the Airbus. They paid 115 million US dollars to cancel the agreement. They received no cabinet approval for this. You know that an Australian company was paid some 15 million US dollars to provide medical equipment and other infrastructure needed for the Hambantota hospital. Journalists revealed that this money had not been used for this purpose. Earlier, Vasanta Samarasing had lodged a complaint regarding a land of about four and a half acres opposite the Sri Lanka Telecom in Fort. They handed it over to a company called Krish to build a hotel. There was a discussion on whether the attempt to abduct journalist Mandana Ismail was because she had information regarding this Krish deal. Vasanta Samarasingha made a complaint regarding this company Krish. An investigation was launched into this complaint. During the investigation, it was revealed that money had been transferred to an account in Singapore and that a medical company had also transferred money to this account and that this money too had been transferred to that account of Nimal Pereira. Nimal Pereira had received money from the company Krish as well. All of this is happening within a corrupt ring. There are politicians in this corrupt ring. There are businessmen involved in it. There are also about 50 members of the 2,400 strong administrative service of the country. There are also a group of investigating officers inside this corrupt ring. Then there are certain owners of media institutions inside this corrupt ring. There are members of this corrupt ring in places where cases are filed and heard against them. It is only a movement that is strongly against corruption that can crush this corrupt ring. This cannot be accomplished otherwise. Subsequently, Anura Kumara Desanayaka requested the people gathered at the location to pick from the files that were stacked up at the location. The list of lands owned by Yoshita Rajapaksa, Siribopura Kalaya, deed number 4129, amount of land 0 0.05 hectares. It was purchased for 1.6 million rupees. Also, Siribopura Kalaya, deed number 4130, purchased for 1.6 million rupees. Siribopura Kalaya, deed number 4132, a land worth 1.6 million rupees. This is the entire list. I believe that there are about 31 lands under his name at various locations. This is a file regarding Basil Rajapaksa. This file contains information on assets of Basil Rajapaksa which he cannot show the manner in which he purchased them. There are few files that have not been touched here. There are a few files of the current opposition leader as well. There are files regarding him, Kiriyalla, Rajita. All of these files are here. Recently, Mahinda Rajapaksa was given a report regarding the cultural fund. I saw that the report stated 3 billion rupees was spent without any approval. You know that the Prime Minister is ex officio, the chairman of the cultural fund. Who was the Prime Minister then? It was Ranil Vikramasinghe. At a time close to the presidential election, I believe it was close to the 10th of November, an emergency meeting of the board was called and an attempt was made to approve certain payments that were already made. Ranil Vikramasinghe did not approve these transactions. Amilathera had also not signed off on these transactions. If the chairman does not sign off, they are not valid. We have the file that proves that Sajid Premadasa had destroyed 3 billion rupees by making payments from the cultural fund without any approval. A person here asked if we have the details of the people who got paid from the money stolen through the bond scam. We wrote to President Gotabe Rajapaksa on four occasions and asked him to release the report compiled by the Presidential Commission appointed by Maitri Palasiri Sena to inquire into the incident. 106 pages are hidden. These pages include details on the people among whom 3,250 million rupees was distributed. 
Several people who got money from this were caught. There was Rojasena Naika, Daya Sirijai Sekara. They were the people who were caught out in the open. In addition to that, I state with responsibility that unofficially, 25 members of the Podujana Peramuna and 52 members of the United National Party at the time were among those who profited from this. The name of the opposition leader was also among them. These people are not aimlessly holding back these details. Everyone in Maitri Palasirisena's household had taken money from Elosius. Maitri Palasirisena, his daughter, his son-in-law and his son. All of them were given money. In a statement, former President Maitri Palasiri Sena said that accusations that he and his family received money from the perpetrators of the central bank bond scam are false. The statement goes on to note that the move by former President Maitri Palasiri Sena to conduct a forensic audit into the bond transaction and appointing a presidential commission to investigate the incident was praised both locally and internationally. The former governor of the central bank, Ajit Nivad Cabral, also issued a statement responding to the accusations that he made a payment of 6.5 million US dollars to a US agent named Imad Zuberi in 2014 without proper approvals. The statement reads, quote, as the banker to the government, the payments made by the central bank on behalf of the government in 2014 have been made on the official written instructions of the government and not on the wishes of a single person." Unquote. In his statement, Ajit Nivad Cabral states, quote, "...politically motivated groups have begun to hurl false allegations against me in order to tarnish my reputation and provoke public hatred upon me." Unquote. The statement adds that he will respond to these allegations through the legal process. The protest at Golfways entered day 25 today. The protesters here continue to demand an immediate solution to the real issues in the country. <laughs> Gamampila and Viravansa will betray the people's mandate for positions and privileges. They act as if they were on the side of the people. But that is not the truth. They will take up ministries once again, regardless of what happens to the people. These rulers do cheap things. Even though Sri Lanka has been an independent nation for 74 years, we have always been ruled by power-hungry, greedy leaders who do not care for the needs of the people. And so as the youth or the younger generation, we have stood up and said that enough is enough and we have decided to fight for our future. The reason why we are here today is because we are today facing the result of multiple generations of corruption and it has accumulated into something that we cannot bear anymore. So we have, we have decided to take a stand against it and we demand transparency in our leadership and we demand that uh, we hold accountable the people in power for the damage that they have done to our economy and to the people. A platform has been set up at the protest site for people to express their views. Jaya, 
As crowds gather here opposite the presence office in Gorfius Green, the protests by the general public continues for the 25th consecutive day. Now, despite today being an auspicious day for the Muslim community in Sri Lanka, despite today being the Eid al-Fitr festival for them, we see a huge presence of the Muslim community in this protest site. Now, these protesters have not just been protesting, they've been chanting, dancing, and also acting out, mimicking the wrongdoings of our political leaders and as you can see there are several actors several musicians dancers who have come here to show solidarity in terms of towards the protest now apart from this we see volunteers coming up here volunteer in terms of beverage food and also sanitary now this is a consideration here opposite the presence office in the meantime we see a similar protest happening opposite the temple trees which is also of the same cause requesting demanding that the prime minister Step down. Eid ul Fitr or Ramazan celebrations were held at the protest site this morning. <laughs> An arms giving was also organized for the Mahasangha. <laughs> Under the leadership of President Gautabai Rajpaksa and his team, the people of this country are now suffering the consequences of 74 years of short-sighted selfish politics. On this day of Ramazan, we wish for the suffering of the people to come to an end. In light of World Press Freedom Day, which falls today, journalists and media organizations joined the protest. The protesters placed fresh pictures of journalists who were murdered or disappeared in place of those that were recently removed by the police. The protest opposite Temple Trees demanding the resignation of Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksha entered Day 8 today. Various groups, including professional organizations, joined the protest today. Motorcyclist Roma Holden Bottle was also present at the protest site. The people are asking them to leave. If they love the country, why can't they listen to the people and leave? Please leave. This suffering is enough. It has been six days since the Satyagraha had been launched at Maina Gogama. News first with the people. We have more news in store for you, but first a quick commercial break. Stay tuned. Yes, I saw you. 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 It will be Yes, I saw you. Unparalleled rewards for a trusted deposit. Welcome back. Muslim devotees across the island celebrated the festival of Eid ul Fitr or Ramazan today. The festival of Ramazan or Eid as it is more commonly known is one of the biggest celebrations in the Muslim calendar. Eid takes place at the end of Ramadan, a month of prayer and fasting. The name Eid al-Fitr translates as the festival of the breaking of the fast. Like the beginning of Ramadan, Eid begins with the first sighting of the new moon. Observing the fast during Ramadan is considered one of the five pillars of Islam. These are five principles which Muslims believe are compulsory acts ordered by God. Fasting is considered to be an act of worship which enables Muslims to feel closer to God and strengthen their spiritual health and self-discipline. 
Ramadan is a period of devotion, fasting, charity giving and self-accountability. It is also considered a month of forgiving. Meanwhile, this is how the Ramazan festival was celebrated at the Davatagaha Mosque in Colombo. Religious observances for Eid ul Fitr were also held at the Colombo Grand Mosque this morning. Celebrations for Eid were held across the island as well. Meanwhile, extending his wishes for Ramazan, leader of the National Unity Alliance, former governor Azad Sali, pointed out the Muslim community underwent numerous challenges during the month of fasting. The fuel, power and gas crisis are still unresolved. A generator at the Narochale power plant broke down today, taking the power crisis in the country from bad to worse. The generator that malfunctioned has the capacity to produce 270 megawatts at the Norochole power plant. The Sinon Electricity Board said that the failure was attributed to a malfunction in an ID fan that supplies air to the boilers. The Minister of Power and Energy, Kanchana Vijay Sekara, said that it will take five days to repair the generator. He further added that the effect of the loss caused to the power grid due to this malfunction will be neutralized by adding more thermal and hydropower to the grid. However, the Ceylon Electricity board states that the power cuts that are currently at 3 hours and 20 minutes will be increased up to 5 hours if the electricity board fails to increase the amount of power added to the national grid through hydropower plants. Will the fuel crisis be solved? Even though the trade union action launched by the private tanker owners concluded long queues to purchase fuel were seen near filling stations today. Long queues could be seen at fuel stations in many areas of the country including Piliandala, Kasbeva and Union Place. A tense situation was reported at the Navy petrol station in Valisara this morning. The situation ensued after fall was only issued to state sector vehicles. When we inquired on the matter, the Navy headquarters said the situation was under control and no assault had been reported. According to our correspondent, there was no fuel available at any of the fuel stations in the Kalutara area. Our correspondent said that there was insufficient fuel at all the five fuel stations in the Dambulna town. Our correspondents in Kandy confirmed that only a very few fuel stations in the area had diesel available. What is happening to the gas crisis? Cabinet approval has been granted to import gas from Thailand. Chairman of Litro Gas, engineer Vijita Herat, said that a company in Thailand has agreed to supply gas to Sri Lanka. The company has agreed to provide gas at a concessionary rate with a discount of 10%. People protested today opposite a literal gas distribution center in Harish Chandrapura, Katana in Nigambo. The protesters say they have not been able to purchase gas for two months. However, several hours later, the people had to go back empty-handed. Where are the solutions promised to the fertilizer crisis? Farmers have still not recovered from the after-effects of the government's abrupt decision to ban the importation of chemical fertilizer. Farmers in Girandurukote staged a protest today, stating that they are going through great difficulty due to the fertilizer crisis. Even though the government requested farmers to carry out cultivations after releasing water from the Mahavari Reservoir, farmers say that it is impossible to farm without chemical fertilizer. 
goya bichua you practically burned down our farmlands we protested against your decisions but you didn't listen boma sa tu gele ka mahatyo bodda bala na me ka kar me ka karan ne hamai gebara dene ku ge mutra sa goma ekata aragana patata ekata sindawa olwe Gothabe and Mahinda should listen to the people. See how these people are raising their concerns. The people are asking you to provide us fertilizer so that we can secure a future for our children. We don't have food to eat. There is no milk powder and there is no medicine. There is absolutely nothing. The president and the prime minister should think about the future generations of this country and resign from their positions. Even a villager can do a better job than them. The Chinese government has decided to provide a grant of 300 million yuan to Sri Lanka for the supply of medicine, fuel, food, and other essential items. The Prime Minister's office announced that China was making the offer following a telephone conversation between the prime ministers of the two countries on the 22nd of April. During a previous conversation, Chinese Premier Li Qiang told Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa that China was aware of the difficulties and challenges that Sri Lanka is facing. The Chinese Prime Minister further said that China will do its utmost most to improve the livelihoods of the people accordingly the prime minister's office announced that the total assistance provided by china to sri lanka with this grant is 500 million yuan which is approximately 76 million us dollars minister nalaga godeheva also spoke about the time frame during which sri lanka expects to receive assistance from the imf even going to imf was delayed a lot because some of our senior officials in the country who were managing the economy and even the former finance minister was not in favor of going to imf the decision to go to imf was taken just about a month ago at most one and a half months ago so these meetings were arranged with very short notice however the team that who went to uh, 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 usa was able to meet the, the senior most officials of imf and uh, overwhelming response not only from imf world bank adb and about six uh, different financial international financial institutions uh, whom they met uh, when it comes to uh, the imf uh, support uh, imf support has a standard way of coming usually for any country uh, for a for an imf program to start there's a minimum time period of 6 months so even though our immediate requirement is 3 billion uh, nobody was expecting imf to uh, give 3 billion so that our finance minister can come back and declare that he has got 3 billion there's a time frame for all these things even the rapid financing aid takes about 3 months so we are trying to cut it short about 2 months first we need to get an agreement we have made the request they are currently considering that news first with the people Meanwhile, a cabinet decision has been reached to name the recently deceased Nadungamwe Raja as a national heritage. Speaking at a cabinet media briefing today, Minister Nalaka Godeheva spoke about this decision. Once you declare that as a national heritage, people should be able to uh, uh, one preserve this, see this. So uh, something like a museum is very much on the cards. Uh, uh, not only museum, uh, probably now this will the, the, this this body will be preserved and it will be protected as a monument, a museum, and there is there are so many things that are to be proposed in the cabinet paper. The inauguration of the Divi Savia program sponsored by LOLC was held this morning. Dry rations were distributed to low income earning families island wide under the program. The event was held at the LOLC headquarters in Rajagiriya under the auspices of group managing director and CEO Kapila Jayawardena. Today, a good deed got underway, led by the people who empathize with those who have nothing to eat and who are in hunger. This company will benefit greatly by providing food to those who have nothing to eat. The Divisavia program will get underway across the island tomorrow.
And with that, wrap up news for tonight. Thank you very much for joining us. Do take care, stay safe, and good night.